morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Helen's Church as we gather today for this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Before our liturgy begins, let's keep a moment of stillness together as we become aware of God's presence with us here. stand as we prepare to join in our opening greeting. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. And so we now continue with our opening hymn, which will appear in a moment. So we remain starting to sing, lift up your voice. <coughs> Last week, you may have read or heard news of the legal sentencing of an individual who is known to many of us. The actions of which this individual has been convicted have caused great harm and hurt to many people. Some of us who gather here this morning may be feeling very shocked and hurt by this news. 
And so it's important for us as a community to acknowledge what has happened and also to acknowledge the feelings it may have brought about in us. By doing this now, I hope that we will feel able to worship and pray this morning in the knowledge that God shares our sorrows and knows all the thoughts and questions we may have. I'm very pleased to welcome this morning Archdeacon Jenny Tomlinson and Steph Haynes, the Bishop's Safeguarding Advisor. They are here to show their support and also to be available to listen to anyone who would like to speak with them after this service. I must clarify that Steph and Archdeacon Jenny are not here today to answer questions nor to offer explanations but to listen to and receive whatever we feel we would like to say to them and share with them today. In a moment, we'll continue our worship by, by praying together the prayer of preparation, which will appear on the screens in a moment. It's a prayer which many thousands of our fellow Christians will be praying with us around the world today. The words of this prayer express the truth that each of us is known completely by God. From that starting point, we then ask God to breathe the Holy Spirit through our innermost thoughts and emotions, so that our love for God may deepen and that we may more fully reflect God's image in our lives. So let us take a moment now to reflect on the words of this prayer before we pray it together. able, please stand as we pray this prayer together. And so we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come now to our prayers of penitence. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and prepare to confess our sins. So we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God together in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We hear the collect prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit as we now hear our first Bible reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. You shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall shine in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honourable, if you honour it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Let's now stand to sing our second hymn.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit. The Sabbath is a cornerstone of the life of the Jewish people and was at the heart of the life of God's people from ancient times. It's a weekly feast lasting 24 hours, beginning at nightfall with the family meal. It marks the division between rest and work and highlights the people's dependence upon God alone. Sabbath is a Hebrew term for the seventh day of the week, when the Torah, the Jewish books of the law, call for the people of Israel to rest and do no work. Indeed, the word Sabbath means stop or cease from work in the Hebrew tongue. Among Orthodox Jews, cooking is forbidden on the Sabbath, and so food is prepared and cooked beforehand and kept hot until needed. The importance of the Sabbath day is prescribed in the Ten Commandments, the first laws given to the developing people of Israel at Sinai. The fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. This commandment gives the symbolic structure to time as a whole and to the weekly round in particular. It sets down a weekly holiday, literally a holy day, as a pattern of life that conforms to the nature of God, who, as the book of Genesis tells us, took a day of rest at the end of the week of the creation. The observation of the Sabbath every seventh day was an important part of Israelite life from a very early date. The main emphasis was on the Sabbath as a day when people could look back to their nation's roots and celebrate God's goodness and renew their commitment to their faith and to the covenant at its heart. For Christian people, the idea of Sabbath is now observed on a Sunday, the Christian day of resurrection. But as for Jewish people, the whole day is called holy because it's a reminder of God's greatness in both creation and in history. For the people of Israel, the Sabbath is also a reminder that faith in God involved care and concern for others, as stated in these words in the book Deuteronomy. The seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. 
In the period after the people of Israel returned from exile in Babylon, the Sabbath became very important. Though over time it became a day which was rigidly controlled by many prohibitions. But as we'll now explore in the Old Testament, it was a day for truly joyful celebration. The words we heard in our first reading from Isaiah the prophet are believed to come from the period in which the Jews were restored to their homeland after their exile in Babylon, which took place in the 6th century BC. During that time, the people had lost all that they held most dear, their land, the city of Jerusalem, the temple, their king. Some even thought that God himself had been defeated by other gods. Once the people returned home, a new way of living and worshipping needed to be established. And so they developed a renewed emphasis on right behaviour in contrast to the fasts and sacrifices of former times. In the place of self-indulgent forms of worship, the prophet now proclaims God's desire to see in the people compassionate and loving action. And a particular feature of this change of heart is the rediscovery of the importance of Sabbath, not as a dull routine, but as a source of joy. <coughs> if you call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honourable, says Isaiah, then you shall take delight in the Lord. We're reminded here of the positive and life-giving approach which Jesus took to the Sabbath. We may recall his famous teaching, the Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. In today's Gospel reading, we see a vivid example of this message. This story of the healing in the synagogue occurs only in Luke's Gospel. However, it's not the only such story to be found in Luke. Several chapters earlier, Jesus heals a man's withered hand in the synagogue on the Sabbath. We know that work was prohibited on the Sabbath, but certain tasks were allowed. A stray animal could be returned, a beast of burden which had fallen could be lifted, and animals could be given water. Surely then a human being who is in great need can be helped on the Sabbath. The leader of the synagogue certainly doesn't think so, and he appeals to the congregation to agree with him. Jesus, however, as we say these days, calls out the man's hypocrisy in this vivid translation from the Message Bible. You frauds, says Jesus. Each Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow or donkey from its stall, leads it out for water, and thinks nothing of it. So why isn't it all right for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and lead her from the stall where Satan has had her tied these 18 years? According to Jesus, the work of God's kingdom takes precedence over the requirements of religious law and the details of religious practice. At the end of this episode, the crowd in the synagogue is delighted by what Jesus has done. His opponents are stunned by this challenge to their way of thinking. It appears that Jesus has acted entirely within the spirit of the words of Isaiah, honouring the Sabbath not serving personal interests on that day, nor pursuing one's own affairs. Rather, Jesus has kept the Sabbath and also made it a day of celebration, of generosity, of freedom, of blessing. What Jesus has shown is that in God's kingdom, people matter more than processes, compassion more than rules, service more than systems. Not that we can function as Christ's church without ways of governing ourselves, but we should seek to ensure that those methods do not diminish our humanity and our joy, and, they, and that they do not prevent any one of us from being healed and growing and flourishing. When the Sabbath is observed by Jewish people today, it gives space for the participants to slow down, unwind, and truly set the Sabbath day apart from the rest of the days of the week, whether with ancient customs and traditions, or with new 
21st century rituals and practices. In addition to that, the observance of the Sabbath also prepares those who celebrate it for the week ahead. The Sabbath ends with a ritual called Havdalah, which means separation, and sets the Sabbath apart from the start of the new week. In the Havdalah, the good gifts of the Sabbath are remembered, and a pledge is made to carry those blessings into the coming week. Some traditions of the Havdalah had a call to the prophetess Miriam, which seems to echo the work which Jesus did on the Sabbath. Miriam will dance among us to mend our world of suffering. May she lead us in our time without delay to the waters of help and healing. The Havdalah always ends with the singing of the Shavuot Tov, wishing each other a good week to come. It goes like this. A good week, a week of peace. May gladness reign and joy increase. For us who keep the Sabbath with our own traditions and worship, this is a gift from our Jewish neighbours to take with us into our week, so that this Sabbath may be a blessing to all. A good week, a week of peace. May gladness reign and joy increase. Amen. Amen. If you're able, please stand as we affirm our faith in God. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So please sit as we're now led in our prayers of intercession. Dear Father God, we come to you today knowing that when we call, you always answer. We thank you that you always have our best interests at heart and desire for us to live in light, healing, abundance and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you tell us through the prophet Isaiah that you will guide us always and will satisfy our needs in a parched land. We understand what is meant by a parched land. Help us now to also understand what we must do and how we must live to find delight in the Lord. We pray for our country that our parched land will receive rain to fill the rivers and reservoirs, that fuel prices may be reduced to prevent serious financial hardship for many and the danger of people freezing to death this winter. We ask that our next Prime Minister will prove to be a person of integrity, able to unite the country, put in place policies to improve our economy, reduce inflation and improve labour relations. We look at the world and worry over so many situations that seem to be running out of control. As the war in Ukraine gets less and less airtime on the news, we are aware that the people there are suffering as much as ever, that lives and infrastructure are being destroyed, and there is a terrifying prospect of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant being destroyed and leaking radiation, putting millions of lives at risk. We thank you that so many people in this country have taken in Ukrainian refugees 
and pray that as time goes on, relationships between hosts and guests will remain good. We pray for a peaceful, quick and just end to the war, so that the lives of the people and the country of Ukraine can be rebuilt. We pray for the women and girls in Afghanistan who are being cruelly denied the freedom of education, the ability to work, or even appear in public without a chaperone. Closer to home, Father, we pray for the church in Solihull, especially as we are seeking for a new rector. We pray that you may raise up a dynamic, forward-thinking man or woman who will lead the parish to great things. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all those oppressed in mind, body, soul or spirit. We ask that you will bring healing and solace to all those who are broken. We pray for those who live in mental darkness, fearful of life or death, anxious or hurt. Pour out your light and peace. We ask for those in physical and emotional pain, not only for relief, but for solutions, support and meaningful care. We think about those whose pain or disability may never go away, and we ask for true support, acceptance, care, and for the opportunity for those less robust to live in our society as valued and equal members. For the families of those affected by illness and disability, and for the millions of unpaid family carers in our country, we ask for compassion, better services and justice. We pray that the needs of both caregivers and recipients will be met with insight and true generosity. We pray for better support services, for those working in social care and health, health and, men and well-being services, home care, care homes, respite services and hospices. We thank you for Christ's example that healing was to be valued and given its rightful value, and none who sought his help was turned away. We pray especially for those in need today, and in our own private daily prayers. For Barry Holloway, Sue Bruce, Lawrence, Eni Wright, Jean Abbott, and Jonathan. We also pray for those who have just died and ask for your comfort for their grieving families. Kevin Evans, Pauline Mortimer and Beryl Moppet, who was so dear to us and who gave so much in our parish. We remember with gratitude for the lives that they have lived and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Andrew Self, David Guest, Ethel Penn, and Barry Soil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, thank you that we can say with Paul that we are convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now, as we go out into the coming week, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
If you're able, let us stand to prepare to share Christ's peace together. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. We remain standing to sing our offertory hymn. And gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. 
you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit as we continue to pray together. <clears throat> Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. All are welcome to receive from the Lord's table this morning, uh, to receive the bread, and if you'd like to also to receive the wine from the chalice. Uh, if you are going to receive the wine, may I just remind you, please, to consume your, the, the bread first before receiving the wine from the chalice. But of course, as usual, uh, receiving from the chalice is optional if you would prefer not to do so. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall give
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life by the power of your Spirit. Keep us always in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us now stand to sing our final hymn.
there will be a private family cremation service at three, followed by a service of thanksgiving at St Dalfidge at 4pm, to which all her friends and family are warmly invited. Afterwards, we, we would be delighted if friends would join us in the Oliver Bird Hall for a finger buffet. There will be family flowers only, with an opportunity to, do, to donate to the Marie Curie Hospice and the Vascular Department at Birmingham Heartlands Hospital, who, who both provided outstanding care. As I'm sure you are aware, Bishop David retires this year, and in this deanery there will be a celebration on Thursday, the 22nd of September, 6 to 8, at St Peter's Church, also Common. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, there are some bands of marriage to uh, declare, so I'll do that now. I publish the bands of marriage between Ben Mason of this parish and Jade Knight, also of this parish. Uh, this is for the third time of asking. And if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's pray for Ben and Jade as they prepare for marriage. Lord of love, we pray for Ben and Jade. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My thanks to everybody who has helped uh, prepare and uh, to lead this service today. Please do speak with uh, Archdeacon Jenny or Steph after the service, uh, if you would like to do so, while we stay for refreshments. And uh, we are here uh, together, St. Marcus and St. Helen's, uh, next Sunday, the 28th, that will be our last Sunday together for a while. And the Sunday after that, the 4th of September, St. Michael's uh, returning to Shaman's Cross Junior School. Um, but we'll never be far apart from each other. And I'm sure we'll be back with you at some point very soon. So let's now stand to hear the words of God's blessing. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.